In this video, I'll demonstrate how you can import your own custom character rig and convert it into a crowd agent. It can be a character you got from Mixamo, bought online, or created yourself in Kinefx. We're going to import and use it in our crowd simulation in Houdini. I'll also show you how to attach different types of custom animations to the crowd agent. Basic concept number four, custom character rig and animations. Okay, let's start off with a geometry node. Drop that down. Now we need an FBX character import node. This node will allow us to import our character rig into Houdini. Now let me just import the file first, import my character, and I'll show you how this works. This is a custom character that I created with the character generator uh, HD that I came up with. This character import node exposes three outputs out of this character rig. Now, say if you have a character rig you got from Mixamo or bought online, it's probably going to be in an FBX file format. So after you select the FBX file, it'll expose these three outputs. The first output is the character mesh. So this is where you have your character geometry, like all the polygons and all the points. Then we have the character rig rest in this is in the rest position. So let me turn this off. Uh, let me make the dots a little. So these are all the joints of our, or, or our bones of our character rig. And this is in the resting position. So the third output is actually the animation. So you can also specify the animation file separately in, in the second parameter. Now I do have an animation that I can import into this character. Now, this, these animations were made for this character, so we don't have to have any extra bone mapping or anything. This just works just because this animation was built for this character rig. Now, let's take a look at what the animation looks like. So, this is the third output right here. This third output will be the actual animation. So, this is just, so this is a jumping animation. Now, how do we actually get this jumping animation into this character mesh? That, we need a bone deform. So, this is sort of like the, basics kinefx 101 bone deform the bone deform is not something we're going to be using in the crowd solver because the crowd agent uses its own way of attaching animations to an agent that's more optimized for crowd simulations where you can have a scene that contains lots and lots of agents the bone deform node is cool for smaller scenes with three to five characters maybe being animated but it will start to slow down the pc if you try to pull a crowd scene with a couple hundred characters being animated using a bone deform. That's where the crowd agent is more, way more optimized. So we're not gonna be using the bone deform. And this could be a good way to test your animation before you go ahead and set up the agents. So I'm just gonna color this black because this is just for reference, just so you can debug your animation and to make sure if it's working correctly. Um, instead of using the F, uh, FBX character import, we're gonna use the FBX animation import. This is a little different. This one only has one output. So it only takes in one FBX file and that's the animation file. So that's gonna be our jumping animation that I have here. Put the render flag here and let's see what this is doing. It's just the same jumping animation, but it only has the rig. It doesn't have the character mesh attached to it. So how can we use this? So what we can do is take this animation, jump, animation and this is the character rig instead of using this to provide us with the animation i'm going to be using this so we're going to attach this guy to here instead i'm going to attach this jump animation to here and let's see what happens we get the same result and that's because this jump animation has the same output that's coming out of this third output of the character rig it's the same data coming out of that I like to use a separate animation import node just because it keeps things a little more clean. You may have multiple animations attached to your agent, so it might be a good idea to get used to all these animation import nodes. To me, it keeps it clean, but that's just preference. This is not set in stone. You can do whatever. So again, this is just Kinefx 101 stuff. That's not really much to do with the crowd solver. So let's set up our crowd agent. I'm gonna put this in black since this is just for reference. Now let's grab our character uh, rig and character animation. So we will be needing these. So I will copy this though. Now, how do we turn this 
this character rig into an agent, into a crowd agent, so we can actually use it in our crowd simulation. We can use the agent from rig node to convert our FBX rigged character into an agent object. The input needs a skeleton. Let's just grab the skeleton over here and stick it in. So we have our agent. It's not looking much like an agent right now. We only see a skeleton rig and we're missing the character mesh. We actually need to add that in separately using another agent layer node. But first, let's give our agent a name. You don't actually have to name it. It comes with a default name, but it's a good practice for future projects where you have lots of different agents and things will get messed. Now we're ready to attach the character mesh to the agent. We need an agent layer node. This will allow us to attach the character mesh to it. Now let's zoom in a bit. It has three inputs. It requires an agent. So that's what we're getting out of this guy. This agent from rig node outputs an agent. So we can use this and we'll attach it to the agent. So the second input, it requires the shape geometry, which is the character mesh. The character mesh is over here. Now, in order to put this rerouting um, dot node, as you're dragging out the line, press and hold down on the Alt button on your keyboard. Remember, you have to have the line dragged out first and then hold down the Alt and left click to finalize where you want the dot to be. The third input is the capture pose. The captured pose is referring to the rest position of the character, which can be a T pose like this character I have here, or it can be an A pose. It's the resting position when the character isn't moving. To my experience, if you're converting an FBX rigged character that's already in the resting position, like what we're doing here, you don't really need to hook up the third input. Whatever we're sticking in here is already in the resting position. Okay, you play it, nothing happens. That's because we haven't hooked up the animation to it. So we now we have to attach the animation data into our agent. We need an agent clip node for the next step. The first input takes agent. So let's just hook it up to the first input. The second input of the agent clip is asking for a motion clip. This animation data that we have here is actually not a motion clip. This is just animation. How do we convert this animation data into a motion clip? We'll need a motion clip node to do that. Now, this is what you're going to see. All these lines here. This is actually mapping out the animation all at once. So motion clips take your animation. And in this case, we have an animated rig. And it flattens it all down onto a single frame, like a graph. Have you ever seen those onion layers that 2D artists use to key in their frames? It's very similar to what motion clips are. Motion clips aren't limited to just character rigs in Houdini. They can be used for a wide variety of things like animation paths of a uh, object, or later on, I'll have a specific mini series just for motion clips and you'll get to modify RBD simulation results without having to re-sim using motion clips. So we're going to take this motion clip and we're just going to hook it up there and let's play it. Let's see if it's doing anything. Nope, still not working. Well, that's because we have to set this up. We have to configure this node. The input is not a character rate. It's actually a motion clip. So we got to select that. Now let's give this guy a name. This will also be the state name as well. So we'll call it jump. Because crowd agents can contain multiple clips or multiple animation clips, we have to actually set it to the one that we want. It's much, it's much easier in this example just because we only have one motion clip which is the jumping animation we need to actually set it to the jumping animation in order to actually see it enable this click and you'll see that jump appears so it's getting the name from there that's where this jump is coming from now the viewport has updated let's play it nothing is happening so we also have to check this option over here and then let's play it the crowd system in Houdini is a load of fun because the crowd solver is so optimized and can handle tons of crowd agents using very little PC resources. I have a ton of fun just by dropping down the crowd source node to our existing project setup that I've shown in this video. You can play around with the positioning of all the crowd agents and have them dance and sing in the scene. Performance is probably the best feature of the crowd agents in Houdini. It just plays back so fast and things get even better when you have a whole crowd crowd.net setup. Thanks for watching and sticking to the end.